Hi, uh, my name is Paola. I come from Peru. Uh, just uh, want to ask, what are your thoughts on the importance of institutions regarding institutions and the quality of public spending regarding all the um, like all the benefits we've, we've had in the last years, but also all the challenges in policy making? Institutions are, uh, <laughs> I mean, in the broader sense of the term. Uh, I think it's, uh, of course, a, uh, you know, a very important issue, and, and I think the, the low-quality institutions um, that we see in some Latin American countries are troublesome. I mean, now, from this perspective, I think what uh, would matter, uh, uh, I think, is the, the quality of the, uh, of the instruments of, um, uh, let's say, of, uh, uh, of social policy. I, I would say, the, for example, uh, the efficiency uh, of uh, public sector institutions in delivery, uh, but also in this uh, increasingly mixed system that we have in, in health and pensions, for example, you know, what is the, um, uh, the efficiency of, in those systems in terms of delivering uh, a good health and good pensions? Uh, and it's a lot of a mixed story. I mean, you can take the story, the, I mean, the debate going on in Chile, for example, with the, with the private pension system on the one hand, or the discussions of, in Colombia in, uh, in health, which uh, is a system that was essentially privatized. Um, and uh, in the, the belief, so, so this issue of institutions uh, uh, and, and the view that somehow you have a larger share for private sector is the solution is uh, for me a huge question mark. By the way, the quality institutions, be them public or private or a mix of them, uh, is of course uh, an essential. But it's a bro I think it's a broader debate than the one that uh, we're having here. Um, so a lot of recent research on uh, productivity dispersion in developing countries has shown that uh, larger enterprises tend to be more productive than the smaller enterprises. Uh, in your presentation, you emphasize the need to support small producers uh, to reduce informality. However, it seems that the implication of this research is that reallocating labor and capital towards these bigger enterprises will have bigger productivity effects. Uh, would you say that to some extent there is a trade-off there between uh, promoting economic growth by reallocating resources to bigger enterprises and promoting social equality or econo and economic and social inclusion by supporting small producers? Well, let me say that the, uh, 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 what you have said is correct. Um, in manufacturing, uh, it's, it, uh, it's probably correct in some service activities, not in all service activities. Uh, it's not cl clearly correct in, uh, in many agricultural activities. Uh, uh, for example, the research on, uh, uh, I mean, Albert Berry had been producing for centuries papers uh, uh, indicating that, uh, that small scale agriculture is actually more productive <laughs> than large scale agriculture. Um, uh, except, uh, um, you know, in some sectors not, let's say. There are sectors in which that is not true, but generally, on average, uh, uh, that is correct. Now, very small agricultural uh, enterprises that were, were, you know, uh, you know very, uh, are less productive, but, you know, some, you know, sizable small agriculture is actually quite productive. By the way, the best example of this is Europe. <laughs> this this uh, continent has plenty of uh, small producers in agriculture. Uh, so, uh, which are quite productive. I mean, uh, but the, uh, let's say, uh, since I live in the New York State, just go to the north of the, of the New York State and look at the agriculture, there, which is highly productive. It's all independent producers. I mean, there is no, so this idea that somehow, you know, the, uh, so in agriculture, I have a huge question mark about that statement. Now, uh, uh, does that mean that, you know, is, you know promoting a small producers is bad? Uh, well, I would say that you have also the other evidence that the gap between the small and, and large in, uh, in Latin America is, um, is much uh, uh, larger, let's say, uh, than that in, a, in an industrial country, uh, which means that you can actually enhance the productivity of, of a small enterprise significantly and, and make them contribute more to, to economic growth. Uh, so it's, I, uh, although I would say, yeah, the equity uh, dimension is, uh, uh, is probably the most important argument for that, uh, you know, there is not necessarily a, a huge trade-off and actually uh, you can do uh, quite a bit uh, in terms of, uh, you know, in, in having positive effects of equity on, uh, on growth. 
thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the the um, social spendi uh, spending is uh, fundamental in reducing inequality. Uh, however, my question is about the sustainability of that social spending. Uh, to what extent that translated for social social economic um, transformation uh, of the structure uh, of of our societies, and uh, to what extent that translated to more uh, opportunities for Latin Americans. Social spending is sustainable if we have a higher tax revenues and, have, and higher social security contributions. So these are not independent uh, of each other. Um, you know, if you do a, the expansion of social spending with def, public sector deficit, then that is not sustainable. I mean, we'll, we'll have some huge problems in some South American countries because of that now. Uh, remarkably, Argentina and, and Brazil now. Uh, so uh, th then it might not be sustainable. But in other countries where you have, I think, a huge difference between the expansion of social spending in the 1970s and what has happened since 1990s. I did not have the graph, but in the, since the 1990s, most of the increase uh, in uh, social spending was financed by higher taxes. Uh, so in that regard, it, it is sustainable. And we still, with a few exceptions, the, the few exceptions being Brazil and Argentina, the taxation levels of Latin America uh, continue to be very low by international standards. So there is a huge, there is still way to go in terms of uh, taxation. I mean, as you can see, I am a big tax man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take I, I, say Latin, I say in the Colombian debate now on tax reforms that uh, if people want to, to eliminate the tax, they have to, at the same time, they must be required to propose which one they are going to create. Okay, because this idea that you know you just oh no eliminate taxes and eh, no you have to have taxes have higher taxes and then the question is uh, you don't want higher taxes yes please propose the, what tax you're going to increase. Let me take the last question here. Last time, no, last time, I'm afraid I apologize too, but. Um, okay, so thank you very much for the presentation. And um, actually, um, I, my question is regarding taxes because i think that we would all agree that we certainly need like the money for it like in order to be found to found all social programs and all the lacks that we observe in our societies but i think that normally the problem is like of course the how and how will that be implemented and that would be my question um so i am putting emphasis in the how because I think that there are normally different approaches. So either, either like forcing the people and, and trying to make like a harder hand into them and punishing them, or they, there has also been like this other idea of lowering, for example, the costs uh, of the people, which we know that doesn't work. Uh, and then I think that the other point is like if they are doing like a cost benefit analysis, pretty much the issue is like what are they gaining from that? And I think that actually that's the reason for which I like very much like the general framework of this conference because it's in the end like having a deep look on what exactly is that these people look, need. Because the issue with informalities as well is that we cannot have like this dual view, right? It's not that it's like the super productive ones with the uh, remainder because informality, informal firms are too heterogeneous and there, there is potential there for sure. Well, let me, uh, let me uh, I guess, uh, mixing this with the previous question also, let me point out, uh, first of all, that uh, of course the issue of the quality of social service and the institutional uh, structure for that social services are essential and, you know, I'm pretty sure that you know, with uh, the uh, you know, with a similar amount of money, you can produce uh, better uh, services. Um, for example, I mean, we were having with Cecilia Lopez uh, this morning a discussion on health in Colombia. Uh, health in Colombia is not a question of money. I think it has uh, twice as a proportion of GDP at least uh, to what it had 20 years ago. So the problem, in, I mean, it has those increased coverage. Uh, but the, the quality of service is still a huge question mark. That's not a question of more money in that particular case, okay? In other cases, it is. Uh, and, and more money has delivered. I mean, my, my graph on the, I, I, I really a fan of my graph 
on the inequality adjustment human development indicators of countries of Latin America versus the international standard. I think that's, a, that's an interesting graph. Yeah? Uh, so it means that it has delivered. I mean, the expansion of social spending in Latin America has delivered uh, results. Uh, and now, uh, it could deliver more. Yes, probably, probably so. Uh, we have to think so. I mean, I, my, my view is that the problem has been the mismatch with labor markets. I mean, we are putting much more people with education in labor markets, uh, and uh, we don't seem to be generating the employment. Uh, you know, the dynamics of employment able to absorb that uh, uh, that uh, labor, that more educated labor force. I think that's that's probably a more important issue from my perspective. Now, the the analysis of taxes in Latin America is quite clear. Uh, our level of taxes with, uh, with the two assumptions I mentioned are lower than international standards. Uh, and second, we have a, a structure that is not a good one. Uh, we essentially uh, uh, don't, uh, we have much, much lower uh, personal income taxes uh, than developed countries. And I, and I must say, I say this in Colombia, I say, or is that I say this, I can't say that because I am an income taxpayer in a developed country. And I know those income taxes are much higher, much more higher than those in Latin America. And this including the United States. I'm talking about the United States, not Europe. It's the United States. Taxes in the United States are much higher than in Colombia and much higher than most Latin American countries, so personal income. So we end up you know, putting a lot of burden on uh, the VAT in particular, but also on corporate income taxes in some countries. Uh, so we, we can rationalize the system, but we, I mean, taxes is a, is a major, tax structures are a major problem, but uh, if you want to work in this direction, uh, increase ta uh, government revenues. There is no other way to go. Thank you very, very much, Jose Antonio. If I could uh, ask you to join me in thanking Jose Antonio and also the speakers. Okay.